All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining our webinar today on how Salesforce.com uses the Salesforce One mobile app. We have a great lineup of speakers for you today. Of course, we have Dan Darcy, the man, the myth, the legend. He is our SVP of user experience, and a lot of you may know him from our Dreamforce keynote stage. He is also the man behind a lot of our amazing Dreamforce keynote demos. So we're really excited to have Dan here today. We also have myself, Chris Landy. I am in Salesforce One Mobile Product Marketing. And we also have Simo, who's joining us from our software engineering team. And Simo is on the, t the IT team who has implemented a lot of the custom maps and custom Visual Force pages that we have in our Salesforce One mobile app. So we're really excited to get more of a technical view from Simo today. But of course, before we get started, I have to show you our safe harbor statement. This basically just tells you that you should make all of your purchasing decisions based off of currently available features. And you can read the statement in its entirety on our website. And of course, we encourage you to go social with us. We'll be monitoring a couple hashtags during this webinar. You can, um, you can find us at Force Webinar, and we'll be monitoring Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Google+, everything in between. You can find us here at our handles, Salesforce Developers. And we'll also be recording this webinar. So if you have to step away early or you miss part of the webinar, we will be recording this, and we'll be posting it to the webinar page where you registered and we'll be sending it out to you in about a week. And of course, if you have questions along the way, please feel free to ask them in the GoToWebinar Q&A pane. You can ask questions along the way if you have questions for me or Dan or Simo, and we have a great team of experts here in the room who will be answering your questions throughout the webinar, and we'll also be taking some live Q&A at the end, so stick around for that at the very end of the webinar. We'll save about five minutes for that live Q&A. And if we don't get to your question, please head over to the success community at success.salesforce.com. We have an awesome Salesforce One group where we have our Salesforce One product managers, our product marketing managers, and also our amazing customers who are there answering questions, engaging with you. So if you have any questions, please head over there and, and get your questions answered in our Salesforce One group. So to kick off the agenda, we're first going to talk about the Salesforce One mobile app. So I'm going to give you a quick intro into the mobile app, tell you about the app, tell you where to get it, and then I'm going to hand it over to Dan Darcy, who's going to walk through mobile strategy at Salesforce, how we really think about mobile strategy, how um, we've done it for our own company, and then we'll show you really how we at Salesforce use the Salesforce One mobile app from creating custom actions that are really helpful for our employees to creating Visual Force cards and Visual Force pages that really help display and, and surface relevant information. And also we've built a lot of cool custom apps. So we're going to show you some of the custom apps that we've built for our own employees. And lastly, we'll talk about user adoption. You know, this is something that's really important to us at Salesforce because we like to drink our own champagne. A lot of people say, eat your own dog food. We say, drink your own champagne. This is good stuff. So we'll talk about how we've gotten our users here at Salesforce to, to use Salesforce.com mobile app. But before we get started, we have an awesome giveaway. So throughout the webinar, we hope that we're inspiring you to build your own Salesforce One mobile app. So along the way, as you're getting inspired and you have great ideas from, from Dan as far as some of the apps that we've built, we would like you to tweet your ideas. So please tweet your idea with Salesforce One app, and we'll be monitoring that throughout the webinar. And Dan is going to pick his top three favorite ideas and those three winners are going to get Salesforce swag. So we have some iCloud SF shirts, some Salesforce One hats, some iPhone cases. So we'll pick those winners at the end. We'll announce the winners at the end of the webinar right before our live Q&A. Yeah, and I'm looking for a lot of creative, fun ideas. Uh, but I'll kind of also go over a little bit of the criteria of how I think about the world with uh, Salesforce One apps in just a little bit. But um, uh, I would love to hear from you guys a lot, and you can even at mention me on uh, Twitter as well to see that. Great. So first, 
let's talk about what exactly is the Salesforce One mobile app. So really the Salesforce One mobile app, I like to think of as kind of your mobile window into Salesforce. So through the mobile app, you can get every object, every custom object that you've made, whether you built it declaratively, um, or you have objects that exist already in your, your account, all of those will, will surface in the mobile app out of the box. You also have all of your fields, all of your customer data, your CRM data, and of course all of your custom apps and integrations. So it was really important to us with the mobile app that, that all of the time and investments that you as admins and developers have put into making your Salesforce Im implementations amazing, we wanted to make sure that we were able to surface all of that, that time and work inside the mobile app. So any custom object that you've built is automatically available in the mobile app. Or if you built some killer Visual Force pages or killer custom apps, you can optimize those and bring them inside the mobile app as well. And of course, App Exchange apps. We know that a lot of you are using our great App Exchange ecosystem to really extend the functionality of your, your Salesforce implementations. So you can now bring App Exchange apps right inside of the Salesforce One mobile app. So we're going to talk about all of these things and how we at Salesforce have done it, how we've brought our custom apps into Salesforce One mobile app and how we've brought our App Exchange partners inside our mobile app. And really there's, there's three main ways that you can customize the Salesforce One mobile app and really make it your own. One is through custom actions, which you can see is the, on the screen here, that's our publisher. And this is really your way to, to drive business forward within the mobile app, whether you're creating a new lead when you're in line at the coffee shop, or maybe you're updating the status of a case when you're in a customer's parking lot. The publisher and custom actions really help you drive business forward. And we're gonna show you um, not only how to create those, but the ones that we're using at Salesforce. And your custom apps. So I mentioned um, a lot of you have created a lot of awesome custom apps, a lot of Visual Force apps. It's really important to us that, that you're able to take those awesome apps and make them mobile. And so we're gonna show you what we've done with making our custom apps mobile. And then, of course, App Exchange apps. Now, um, we have an awesome community of App Exchange partners. I believe we have about 75 or 80 partners who have already made their apps mobile. And you're able to easily install these apps right inside of your Salesforce implementations just with a click. And we're going to show you what we've done there. So without further ado, I want to hand it over to Dan Darcy, who's going to talk about mobile strategy and how we think about it at Salesforce. All right. Thanks, Chris. Hey, everyone. Um, so I kind of wanted to give you guys uh, an idea of how we think about the world here at Salesforce. And uh, Chris alluded to it earlier about drinking our own champagne. We actually really like to guzzle it here, so uh, and, and myself personally. Um, and one of the big things that uh, we thought about is you know immersing ourselves in the world of Salesforce One. And so you can see here, you know, at Salesforce, we every great project starts with a V2 mom. And um, I'm actually just going to show you kind of our vision and values and our methods uh, today. So the V2M part of this, um, and kind of give you an idea of how we thought about it. And, and you can see here, you know, it says we at Salesforce can run our business on Salesforce One, and we re we truly believe that. And while on the go, we need a mobile app, real a mobile app that has real business value that will easily accomplish everyday tasks. And so when we started thinking about this, our top three values were real business values and use cases from the business. Uh, we wanted to make it really easy to use, and again, we kind of want to be the obviously the shining example, so that we can really create uh, a lot of uh, great um, productivity and efficiency throughout uh, our business. And so, when we look at the methods, uh, and, and you know, and actually going back to that other slide, um, in terms of real business value, and when you guys are have Salesforce One app ideas. Uh, we really want folks to to use the app, um, the Salesforce One apps, um, on a daily basis. And you know, what are things that you can do that that you don't need to do at your desktop? That you can do it on the go while you're sitting in line at Starbucks, or you know, you're on the airplane, or um, you know, you're just uh, walking around, making sure uh, you know, hanging out and going to lunch. Well, we started thinking about things, and um, you can see here from the methods that we were looking at um, and how we were going to implement, uh, you know, Salesforce One at Salesforce. Uh, the first thing was obviously uh, is always to gather data and feedback. Uh, you know, we want to hear from the business and see, like, you know, we wanted to survey all the employees to, to really tell us um, what exactly do you guys want us to build. Um, and then we thought about the world in two different ways of apps. Um, first is all employee apps, so apps that um, all of our employees can take advantage of, and that kind of includes like 
IT ticketing or taking a look at the org chart or um, you know submitting time off. Um, and you can see here we wanted to create top five all employee apps um, for the business as well as killer departmental apps. And not everyone at Salesforce will see specific, I mean, specific to your role and department. We wanted to really understand, you know, what are the top two departmental apps per department that we could deliver and, uh, and really help uh, them do their job on the phone. Um, obviously, product perfection. We want to be the shining example and consume all Salesforce One features as they become available to really experience um, everything that our customers are experiencing as well so that uh, we can get that out there and perfect it and be the really showcase example. As well as creating ambassadors. You know, obviously, the more we use our phone, the more, um, it, you know, the more we can tell a story of, of actually how we really run our business on our phone. Uh, last, or uh, number six, is about enablement. And with enablement, uh, you know, we wanted to have, I, I mean, there's so many ideas, you know, as, as Salesforce is the fourth most innovative company in the world, again, um, I'm sorry, the number one most innovative company in the world for the fourth time in a row, according to Forbes. I thought you had that wrong. Yes, I did. <laughs> we aren't the fourth. Um, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where we have ideas. There's no lack of ideas here at Salesforce. And to harness that um, innovative energy, we needed to come up with a process to enable um, all these ideas coming from different parts of the business uh, to really create Salesforce One apps. So we we're, we actually have a, you know a process that I'll go over later in just a second to show you. And I think um, just to interject, I think right. that's something that's really cool, not only about Salesforce but about the Salesforce mobile app is that innovation is coming from everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's coming from the IT team like Simo is on, and it's also coming from all these departments. You know, I hear about different groups who are thinking of different mobile apps that are just for their department or just for a specific function. And it's so awesome to see that innovation coming from everywhere. Absolutely. And that's, you know, I'll talk about an app in just a second uh, where this one app kind of came out of nowhere. And, uh, you know, it's one of Mark's, Mark loves this app because it, it really does help, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, inside of Salesforce. And, and I'll kind of talk about that in just a second. And then the last two is Salesforce Showcase, of course, and then Lifecycle App Management. You know, we don't want to have, you know, so many apps that it's, it's uh, you know, so busy or so much for the business to, uh, to really understand the different use cases. So we have something called Lifecycle App Management to really take a look at the usage that's happening uh, within the business. Um, and if they're not using it, we may end of life or decommission some apps. Um, and uh, just, you know, we want to put the best apps forward. So here is a high-level overview of how Salesforce uses the Salesforce One mobile app. Um, you know, and, and Chris framed it great earlier with uh, the three things of custom actions, visual force cards, and our custom apps and the app exchange apps. So in terms of the custom actions, uh, you could see some of them here, uh, where you know, uh, create contact is obviously very self-explanatory. But you know, we have time off requests. We have uh, coaching, which is a great thing where we can create. Uh, you know, coaching examples happen all the time when you're sitting in a meeting. You're like, this is a coaching moment, and I want to be able to track that and log that. Uh, deal support requests. You know, a lot of our sales teams uh, need to find the best talent in the company to help them with their deals. So you can create that custom action right there. Um, even finding an executive sponsor for either a project or thing that you're going on. Um, in terms of Visual Force cards, uh, we'll show you an example here, but you know, obviously a lot of folks have Visual Force pages and how can we make that mobile um, and how can we take it to Salesforce One. We have some great examples that I'm about to show you, um, but you can make those Visual Force apps on your desktop now into components um, on, on the different objects and records inside of Salesforce uh, and create cards out of those. And then the last is uh, custom apps and app exchange apps. And again, this is where I'm talking about the majority of the innovation that's happening here is these micro use cases that are happening uh, um, amongst the business. Uh, for instance, org stats, you know, um, what admin wouldn't love to see kind of what's happening in your org in terms of uh, limits, um, et cetera, and profiles, et cetera. We built an org stats uh, um, app that I can't demo today, but uh, you know, at, at some point would love to probably show it in a, in a breakout session. Uh, we have you know, volunteer force. Uh, there's a lot of volunteering happening here at Salesforce, which is amazing. Um, and we, you know, it's, we wanna be able to see that app, see all the different volunteer events that we have going on. Org chart, time off manager, approval central, um, IOUOME. 
And one here that's in the top right hand corner is, is called Connector. And this is the app that I wanted to talk to everyone about that Mark loves. Um, it's, it's basically a job shadowing app. Obviously at Salesforce is a big, big uh, uh, team of folks here. And a lot of people want to know and be exposed to other parts of the business. And other people want to mentor and help um, other young talent here at Salesforce. Or even, you know, just not young talent, but just other talent at Salesforce. Well, you can go into the connector and you can actually say, I'm ready to be a mentor and here are my roles and responsibilities. And if you want to be mentored by someone, you can go into this app um, and find a new mentor. And it's kind of a, jo it's a job shadowing app. Uh, to kind of get exposed to different parts of the business, and and that's one of the the coolest apps that uh, you know came from someone in the business that uh, you know uh, just had this idea, built it out, and and made it a reality here at Salesforce. So it's pretty awesome. And you know what I think is really cool, just looking at our app portfolio, you can really see kind of the culture of Salesforce come together through our apps. You know, we have like Dan mentioned that connector, which connects people in different departments with each other because that's really important as it sells for us that people really are able to experience different different job roles and have mentors and have mentees and volunteer for us. You know, that's something that's really core to our culture. And so it's really cool to see these these really important things about our company servicing through mobile apps now. And I think yeah. that's something that our customers will end up doing as well. Like those core parts of your company become mobile. Yes, absolutely. And I mean and that's the thing, if you think about it, not everyone can just not everyone feels comfortable approaching other people to ask, you know, to shadow you, um, you know, and, and whereas I feel comfortable asking Chris to shadow her, which I do a lot, which is great. I'll take you under my wing. Yes, <laughs> no problem. Um, so anyway, so moving on, enough of those jokes. All right, creating custom actions for employees. So if we take about, think about actions, and here's how we use actions at Salesforce. There's two categories to think about it. There's global actions that can happen for obviously all parts of the business and then there's object or role based actions um, that uh, depending on who you are and what object or, or uh, record you're on um, specific actions will appear because what we want to do is obviously be able to surface the right actions at the right time to make uh, you know to make it efficient and productive for the employees that are using the app so you can see here global action layouts, um, you know, publisher actions that appear on the feed, groups, and people, and that's that's kind of the majority of where our global actions are um, are at. And you can get there to set up, create global actions and publisher layouts, and that's where you can put all of those, like we were saying, create new opportunity or create new account or um, time off request, etc. And again, they can be employee role-based, and we have some of those um, where they're specific um, employee role-based global actions that we have going on. Um, and then, then there's object-specific uh, actions. So like, for instance, when we're on an account, we want to create a new opportunity. You want that to be right there. Or um, when you're on an opportunity, you want to deal support request, and uh, you need that quickly. So what are the top used actions that we can see? And what's great about this, too, is we have metrics on the different actions that are being used um, that will um, basically reorder where the pole position of those different actions are, if that makes sense. So, you know, the most used actions will be on the first screen of the publisher and obviously the least used actions, but that are still important will be, um, you know, further back uh, in the action publisher. So moving on, um, today we have about 13 global actions. Um, we have about 30 plus contextual actions and you can see that we've really focused on that there because we want it to be specific to each person um, on how they use and they go about their day and their and how they use run their business from their phone. Um, but tomorrow, um, you know, in the future, we're going to really focus more on the contextual actions um, for other value, high value service workflows. So, you know, we kind of just want people to think like we, we want to kind of be like a, a you know, reading the folks' minds like, oh, it's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if on this account I could do this and that action should appear right there. You know, and something that when when customers are asking us about setting up these publisher actions, we always recommend that the majority be contextual. A lot of people, I think, um, by default want to make a lot of global actions. And really the power is making in those contextual relevant actions. And so we recommend that um, roughly two thirds or um, you know, even up to like 80% of your actions be contextual because that's really um, where it happens, like serving up that relevant information and taking that next step um, on the relevant record and object. Yep. 
So let's get to a demo actually to show you guys some custom actions. Uh, you know, uh, as a demo guy, I love seeing technology a lot sooner than slides. But uh, sorry for the 20 minute delay on on showing you a demo. So here we go. Um, let's see if we can pull up my. There we go. Can you guys see my phone? Is it up there? Awesome. Actually, this is a really funny background photo. Um, uh, the folks that have been to Dreamforce will appreciate this. Uh, you know, after a hard long week, uh, Chris and I were actually walking into the W on Howard Street, and uh, look who we find at the bar. But Sassy just um, cozying up to a vodka soda with the Salesforce One mobile app in his phone. Sassy had a long week. It was definitely a long week, and I'm looking forward to Dreamforce and seeing you guys all there again. Okay, so Salesforce One, you can see there in the top left-hand corner. Um, I obviously have 11 notifications, but what we're taking a look at is my feed, um, and uh, we won't go through this because obviously this is a live implementation, but let's take a look at the publisher, and so by drilling or tapping on the uh, cloud publisher in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see off um, new group, thanks, link, putting a file up there, IT ticketing, you can see a lot of folks, uh, that's obviously on the very first page because a lot technology, so we need to actually have that IT ticketing right there. Um, if we look over, um, you know, guitar and coaching moments that are right there as a global action. But I want to direct your attention to the middle of the screen for the difference between the two really quick. So S1 customer feedback is, you know, a lot of times I'm standing in front of a customer and uh, they have a lot of feedback on S1, so I can go ahead and tap on that um, action and to, to actually input that feedback and then the S1 feedback is internal for employees so if I go ahead and tap on that um, this is where I can submit feedback and experiences that I've seen um, from S1 myself and uh, these uh, literally end up in scrum meetings the next day where people talk about them uh, to make sure that uh, feedback is being heard and so obviously Salesforce is all about feedback and uh, you know we love to hear from you and so uh, I would uh, love your ideas and thoughts um, the more and more we go along and the more uh, you guys use Salesforce One. Well, you know, and I think this this action is pretty cool because when we first were rolling out the Salesforce One mobile app, we of course uh, we test on our employees first because we really want to make sure that before we roll it out to our customers, we are thoroughly testing it in our organization. And so this was something that we used when we rolled out to employees. Um, it was an easy way for them to submit feedback, submit ideas, and we really used our own employees as our pilot test group before we rolled it out to all of you guys. Yep, absolutely. So, so, um, so instead of global actions, now let's actually take a look at contextual um, actions on objects. So I'm going to go ahead and go in into an account. Um, and I'm going to go into this account called Landian Associates. Um, who, who Chris obviously has her own company here, which is amazing. But if we tap on the publisher in the in the lower right-hand corner, you can see a lot of these uh, different actions now are changed. There's no longer there's a global action of post at the top, but you see log a call, sales task, create opportunity, create contact, um, uh, you know, sales events, files. And you can see a lot of the global actions kind of took a back seat to the contextual actions that are needed on this specific account. And one cool action I want to call out is the HP ePrint. So you never know when you're a sales rep, you're on the go, um, you're about to go into an account, but you needed to print the latest uh, PowerPoint or the latest deck that you have uh, that uh, you know you want to kind of distribute after the meeting's over. Well, HP ePrint is pretty cool because what you can do here is now we're on this Landy and Associates uh, account. We go ahead and tap on HP ePrint, and um, it's going to ask you to add a file and choose a print service. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look, and there's a cool file that uh, I can print out. And I'm on the road, and I'm on the go, and what I want to do is choose a print service. So based on my geolocation, which obviously you guys can all see here, I'm at uh, Salesforce uh, headquarters. I have these local uh, I can just ePrint. Uh, that deck and oh it looks like I might be heading towards you know the UPS location so I can go ahead that's an 897 feet I can go ahead and tap on that and I can submit that and print that deck out and by the time I walk over there it'll be right there and I'm not going to do this because this is really live um, and uh, it will track it against this account. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is really cool this is a, a really cool action of bringing the power of our partners right inside 
of the Salesforce and mobile app. And I know like we have a lot of sales reps, they're on the road, they're on the go, and this action has been awesome for them, being able to print from anywhere. Yeah, so this is, a, this is one of my favorite uh, um, actions, custom actions that uh, we've seen here. So um, another one, another action uh, I'll take a look at is on an opportunity. Uh, so here we are obviously in the chatter feed and you can see this client is very demanding. Chris is very demanding. She's the one who made this webinar work, so thank you very much. Um, so here we are actually on an opportunity. We could take a look at the contextual actions here for this opportunity. Um, and you can see here competitive deal support requests or a pricing deal support request or an EVC meeting. You know, when um, a lot of our sales reps here need help, uh, you know, because we win as a team and lose as a team, they need help in certain areas uh, such as, you know, pricing the deal out or uh, being, uh, you know, going against a competitor. Well, by tapping on these contextual actions, what they can do is really bring in the best talent and, and request the best talent for that specific deal at any point in time. So we've seen this being very effective um, and a great use case for contextual actions. And I think that's it for in terms of a demo. All right. Awesome demo. There's a reason that they call you Demo Dan. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. So moving on to Visual Force cards. Um, uh, so one of the biggest challenges, uh, you know, I wouldn't say challenge. What we've had here is you know, how do we how do we make all of the Visual Force apps that we've created for the desktop mobile now? And here's a great use case in um, uh, a Visual Force app that we created that we made into a component or a card on an account. And it's called our adoption dashboard. So, you know, before we go into an account, we have the ability to take a look at how they're actually using Salesforce uh, from a, from a, you know, just a usage standpoint. And uh, the challenge was here that, you know, it's like, hey, um, our sales reps are mobile um, and they're out in the field and they want the ability to uh, open up their phone and take a look at how this account is doing uh, as a Salesforce customer before they go into that account. Instead of firing up their laptop, they can just go here on their account record and see this Visual Force card um, of the adoption dashboard. And you can see here the login um, in the, the left-hand screen is 91%. So this is a great Salesforce customer. Um, and if you can drill into that more, you can see specifically what they own um, and how they're using um, specific features like mobile, um, the different clouds, et cetera. And so this has been a great way for us to engage and interact with our customers. But what um, an amazing job the IT team did was take that app, which is, it could be a full standalone app, and put it contextually within an object record, which obviously in this case is the account record. And we have Simo here who can actually talk about the implementation for all the developers out there of how he was able to take that uh, Visual Force app and create that component to make it a Visual Force card. So Simo, go ahead. Okay. Uh, <clears> That's and uh, good morning again, everybody. Uh, so, so uh, this application uh, uh, is the first uh, app that my team put together on the platform. Um, it is um, not anymore the latest and the, the greatest thing we have out there, but we thought it would be a good idea to share some of the experiences from uh, uh, from a project team out here who, who was basically facing facing the uh, Salesforce uh, One platform for the first time. Uh, so the application itself is uh, basically a retrofitted uh, version of an existing analytics app like that like Dan uh, described um, and, and we have the original the legacy app in our own um, internal Salesforce org. Um, uh, when we uh, first started looking into this, uh, the, the team really had no uh, experience at all on, on the uh, S1 platform but we had a really good, uh, fairly good understanding of the, of the code base that made up the legacy app. Um, and, uh, and and as always, we were pressed on time. There was there was a, about two to three weeks time frame to to get the code done, get it um, tested, and get it uh, deployed into production. Um, which is great. Sometimes you only only get one week, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you you take you take what you get. Um, uh, so in the ideal world, uh, we would uh, like to be in a place where we can we can think about mobile first. But, but there's still a lot of uh, applications that were made before mobile really came into forefront. So this type of uh, uh, project is probably still, probably still fairly common. To, it definitely is common for us, and I'm sure it's very common out there in, in the world. So, so the biggest task, of course, there is um, to take something that look, looks really nice on a 22-inch screen and then try to squeeze that, that thing into a um, uh, 
smartphone screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, it goes with a good luck with that. Yeah. yeah. And so in the future too, you want to, um, I mean, there's more um, upgrades that you're going to make to this, right? Is yes. that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. There's, um, so, uh, so some of the lessons learned from from this project, uh, if you look at it in the middle, it. Uh, uh, we probably recognize the uh, jQuery mobile we can feel in there. It um, it basically was the skill set that our team had in place, and, and given the time frame we had to get this thing together, um, uh, you know, we, we we were we took what we we knew and and we, we went with it. And uh, the so the big positive surprise was how uh, how flexible the Salesforce One architecture really is on the on, on in terms of what you can put on top of it. So awesome, awesome, Sino. Right. Thank you very much. So yeah, so that's a that's an example of the Visual Force cards to kind of think about um, to make things contextual and relevant on sp- uh, particular objects and records. So next, I want to move on to um, building engaging customer apps for employees. Um, the way we think about the world, as I was talking about earlier, is, is in two different things: departmental apps and all employee apps. And you can see a couple of examples of the departmental apps here, like company-wide forecast or sales forecast that. Are, are particular to the sales organization, but all employee asks like creating tasks, volunteer force, IT ticketing, time off, etc. You know, and to kind of give you guys an idea, um, I, I'm, I'm hoping the Salesforce One app ideas are are, uh, are flowing uh, pretty big here. You know, uh, here's an idea that we had too was like, for instance, Salesforce Daily, which is a news app, um, kind of about you know, Salesforce. There's so much news going on here at Salesforce. Um, How's what's what's happening internally at the company, but then also what's happening at our customers? So that before we work, we walk into an account. Maybe that could be another Visual Force card. Is you could get to see display all the different news that's happening recently at the company that you're or the account that you're about to walk into. Uh, so you know that's an idea that I have out there. Um, obviously, that's kind of in the um, and it's going through the IT organization right now as an idea to kind of consider. Um, and that's one. Another one uh, is an onboarding app. And for instance, you know, we have a lot of new employees that started Salesforce all the time. It would be great to have a one-stop shop uh, for new onboarding employees to come and take advantage and understand who's who, who's what, and what you should do in the first week, first 30 days, first 60 days, first 90 days, etc. And you know, um, obviously, it could be a tutorial for Salesforce One as well to kind of go through that onboarding app. So I'm really, go ahead. Oh, just I you you mentioned um, people sending their ideas. Yeah. I just want just in case you missed it at the very beginning, we are tracking the hashtag on Twitter Salesforce One app, and submit your favorite app ideas. Like we mentioned in the beginning, we're hoping to inspire you to to ideate on your own Salesforce One apps, or maybe build your own Salesforce One apps. So submit your ideas on Twitter, and Dan will be picking his favorite. We have so many great ones already. It's awesome to see everyone submitting their ideas already. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to it. All right. So so how do we find um, real business value for, for custom apps? Uh, again, we, we asked employees. We're always gathering feedback to kind of stack rank app ideas because we've heard a lot so far. And here are the top five that we've we've seen here at Salesforce that we're, we're working on. Uh, the first one is Dream Job Central. You know, basically, how are we going to find everything we need to know about, you know, HR questions we have or, or payroll questions or what holidays do we have off this year? Um, Dream Job Central will be the place to go to ask these questions and find um, everything that you need to know. Um, you can see next is Approval Central, uh, which is a one-place stop, uh, one place for managers to approve all requests that come in, um, and uh, you know, so they don't have to go to their, um, it, you know, obviously they get an email alert as well, but they don't have to go to their email, then log into the app on their desktop and then approve it there. They can do it right here at Approval Central. I owe you, you owe me, and I'll, I'll demo this in just a second. It's really cool. It's delegating to do tasks to your colleagues when you're sitting in a meeting. Um, you know, kind of talking about next steps. It'll be like, okay, um, this meeting's over. Chris, now, you know, because I did this webinar for you, you owe me something, and I will track that um, because I did her a favor, and then, you know, I basically owed her uh, doing this webinar, which is, you know, a great way that we track that here um, on the Salesforce One app. Well, now you owe me a breakout session at Dreamforce yes. on the same subject. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I expect to see that that IOU in my Thing. Thanks. Great. This is going to be. It. By the way, we're going to take this to this breakout. I'm already pre uh, um, advertising my breakout session at Dreamforce. It'll probably get better from here on out. So, 
Uh, work.com is another app. You know, obviously we're sitting around the, the, the table talking about uh, goals and feedbacks when you have your one-on-ones with your employees. And then trust everywhere. Obviously, um, as, as everyone knows on the phone call, uh, trust is our number one um, value and there's nothing more important than trust. So uh, the awareness of our employees around trust and understanding uh, you know, anything that uh, any of our employees need to know, it's just, again, another one-stop shop for that. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, now, uh, this is, a, is an eye chart, and I know this will be available, and I'm not going to go over every step of the box here, um, but what this is to kind of give you guys an, an understanding of how a Salesforce One app idea comes from an idea to reality. And so um, what happens is, like, as we were saying, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, there's so much innovation happening at Salesforce, and we want people to really submit app ideas um, and really come together with a plan to really showcase the real business value of this app, the ease of use, how it's architected, and how this performance happens um, within the app. And you can see it comes before an enablement board, and they'll, they'll judge the app based on certain criteria. And you can see that here. And then once this happens, it goes into, uh, you know, they, it's built out. It goes into the enablement board. They vote on it. If it gets past that um, area, then it goes into a release schedule. And we get a beta program before uh, an org-wide rollout or a role-based rollout, um, depending on if it's an employee app or a departmental app. Um, and then after that app becomes um, release to employees, uh, that's not where it ends. It actually comes, we actually have another step here, uh, which is all about, you know, making sure that the app is being used. And we have metrics around usage and, uh, and want to make sure that with every app, uh, you know, all of our employees are getting the best uh, usage out of it. And, you know, the, the folks that own those S1 apps will, are responsible for the roadmap um, and modifications and updates to that uh, Salesforce One app. So it's pretty cool. Well, and I think um, I'm, we mentioned earlier, um, it's really cool to see the innovation coming from everywhere, from all across Salesforce, from different departments. You know, I was just talking to our social team the other day, and they, you know, they control um, not only our our external Twitter and Facebook, but they also enable our employees internally to make sure that that they're on top of the social message. They have this awesome program called Social Ambassadors, where basically they, they will show them all of the recent news and make it really easy for our employees to share that news socially. And so they're actually building their own Salesforce One mobile app where right within the app, right within the mobile app, they can see the latest news that they can share and they can share it right from within Salesforce. And so it's just super cool to see different departments building these new apps. All right. Yes, absolutely. And so, actually, let's go. Let's go ahead and actually go jump into the app again, and let's do a demo, a really quick demo. And I, I see that we're at 10:41, and I want to get to questions. So we're gonna probably speed up really fast here um, on a few things. And it looks okay, like I was see. disconnected from okay. AirPlay. There so it is. There it is. Great. All right. Can you guys see this? Okay. There we are on the webinar. All right. So um, here, obviously, we're taking a look at my Salesforce One left nav, and you can see all the uh, objects that I'm available at. And I can see a lot at Salesforce because I have a profile that can see all the different departmental apps to make sure that things are working. You can see like Sales Forecast. Uh, here's one app that says Approval Central. So if I tap into that, again, this is my one-stop shop for all approvals like um, quotes, discounts on opportunities, contracts, solutions, agreements, knowledge, or time off requests. Like you can see here, a couple of my employees, Ed Park and Chris Muller, you know, um, Ed Park is responsible for the Dreamforce app, and he's asking to take a few days off around Labor Day, and uh, since we're close to Dreamforce, I'm going to say, sorry, buddy. Um, <laughs> so I will reject that. And, uh, sorry, you know, Ed. Yeah, sorry, Ed. I don't know if you're listening, but uh, really sorry about that. Um, but this is a great app to, for managers to really take a look at all their uh, pending approvals in one place. Um, another app I want to take a look at is show you is the org chart, which is right here. This is a really cool app that um, everyone at Salesforce loves um, because obviously Salesforce is growing so much. You know, it, you can see here, um, here's my photo. I roll up to Clarence, to Alex Down, pa Parker, to Mark. And if I go ahead and tap on certain people, you can see who goes underneath um, each of the different employees. And here's Mark's profile. I can call him. I can email him. I can take a look at uh, one of his employees like Parker Harris um, and tap on him and see all the information about him as well, who his list of reports are, 
Um, and it's really cool. It's a cool app that uh, the IT department has really rolled out. And so um, everyone loves this app. And one of the cool things too is obviously you tap on Parker's face. I can actually go right to um, his profile inside of Chatter. Um, oh, see, so look at and I, I, I've uh, created a new IOU thing for Parker. You can see all this cool stuff that Parker's on. Um, but that's the org chart app, and and people love it here. So um, let's see. Let's look at more apps here. Uh, IT ticketing, IOU. There's connector. I'll do this IOU really quick because I know we're running out of time. Um, so the IOU task or app is about delegating tasks um, or to dos to your fellow employees. So here are all the list of employees that I've worked with before. Um, if I tap on IOU, you can see here that you know obviously I owed Parker Harris an awesome Dreamforce announcement, which I won't re uh, reveal. I owe Al a demo for Sales Cloud and, and Chris, uh, you know, Landia webinar, and you can see different people are owing me something. Like, I, I'm asking Mark to owe me a killer Dreamforce 14 for everyone on the phone. Chris Landia owes me ice cream for doing this webinar, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, um, there's a lot of great ideas out there, um, and you can see the different apps, uh, Volunteer Force, Tasks, My Charts, etc. And these are just some of the things. And again, we're in our infancy stages here. Um, at Salesforce and developing these apps and developing the process around this. So what I want to do is go back to the slides to actually talk about um, adoption metrics um, and how we get folks, once we roll these apps out, how we get them to uh, really get to use Salesforce. And one thing I want to interject really quick is you showed a lot of cool custom apps and and actually you know our IT team has created some of these and actually made them available on the App Exchange. And so Approval Central is available on the App Exchange to all of our customers as is the IOU app. Oh great. And so that's really cool. You know we have this our, our team is making some amazing things and they're making it available to our customers. Yeah, awesome. So you should, uh, uh, user adoption at Salesforce. So um, I'm going to quickly blow through these pretty fast. So we want our employees logging into the Salesforce One mobile app every day, of course. So how do we do this? What are our best practices? Well, we're always about launch, launch, and relaunch. So we have, you know, chatter groups. Um, we do Q&A. We uh, do chatter posts. We send emails. We have these Salesforce One moment cards that we create um, that uh, we can reshare on chatter just to show people the real-timeness uh, and the ease of use of, of a particular um, action or a particular Salesforce One app. Um, we have, uh, you know, adoption is top down. So we have, you know, getting our execs on board and, and you know, each of these different execs really do has particular use cases uh, in how they go about running their business from their phone. So it's been an amazing thing to get our execs on board um, to really uh, showcase Salesforce One. Next is uh, obviously on-demand training videos. Uh, you know, uh, for a lot of the, you know, the, you know, it's just easy to throw up a Camtasia, you know, using um, AirPlay or Reflector, um, and showing how easy it is to get that uh, that use case across the, the goal line. And so we use training videos a lot. So people are just, you know, sometimes instead of reading, they'll just uh, click on a video in uh, Chatter and have it play in the feed and see how that use case is used well, and working. And also on demand is key because we know everyone is super busy. People don't always have time to attend training sessions. So these quick little videos that they can watch and get an idea of the new app or get an idea of how, how Salesforce mobile app works are key. We always recommend our customers to do these on-demand videos. Yeah, if you think about it, I mean, if you can't do it in less than 60 seconds, then you shouldn't be doing this in Salesforce One. So that's that's how we think about it. We call them Salesforce One moments, and uh, it's kind of quick, easy moments that, uh, that these videos are 60 seconds or less. Um, obviously, sharing use cases and getting that uh, out there, obviously, like this, 50 ways to run marketing from your phone. Uh, we have a lot of departmental folks, you know, like, you know that talk about what they use uh, Salesforce One for, and we capture that uh, amazingness and put it into a, a, a deck to share um, to let people know and drive awareness around those use cases. And then the last one is obviously always gathering user feedback and ideas, um, just listening to um, the business um, and how they use Salesforce One. Uh, really helps us improve Salesforce One from an adoption standpoint. And I think to that standpoint, it's just you know you're you're never done. You know, you have always an iterative process. You're always building on it. You're always creating new things, new ideas, getting new feedback, and so you're constantly adding and making it better for your employees. Perfect. Okay, so we're we're nearing the end here. Um, 
of course, we want to know how we did, what could make this webinar better, how can we do a better breakout session at Dreamforce, so please give us your feedback. We have a bit.ly link, um, bit.ly slash sf1mobile, and we'll also send out this link shortly. So please let us know your feedback. And we also have some resources to help you get started. We have the awesome Salesforce One group in the success community. I have another bit.ly for you at bit.ly slash success Salesforce One that will bring you right inside that Salesforce One group of the success community. And we have a great resource center as well. This is where you can find all of the docs, all of the help and guides and videos and demo videos, everything that you need to really get started with Salesforce One. So you can find that at the Salesforce One resource center. And we talked a lot about Dreamforce. We hope that you guys are all going. We have a, a great discount code for admins and developers, or let's be honest, anyone can use this. Yeah. Sign up, come, come to Dreamforce. And we hope to see you there. And like Dan mentioned, he's going to do a breakout session on the same content. And we're moving fast, so we're gonna have more apps to show you, more cool things to show you. And you, you all might have heard about connections coming up um, next month in September. We have a special developers um, conference as part of connections as well. And um, there's a bit.ly here you can sign up and we hope to see you at connections yeah, as well. Come to Indianapolis. I will be there. It'll be fun. It'll be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Now, giveaway time. So thank you everyone who's been submitting your hashtag Salesforce One app ideas and we've been looking through as we go along and Dan has picked his top three favorite ideas. All right. Okay. See. Winners. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see. All right. Uh, Ryan Taylor with uh, you know the Force Webinar Social Location app advises you to of prospects, customers at the same event as you, insight for better conversation. I think this is a really cool app just because you want to know and see you know who is around you when you're going to a particular event. I think that's actually a really cool app. And that's Ryan Taylor at Ryan Otopia. Awesome. Congratulations, Ryan. Um, next is Paige Pearson. So uh, her her tweet was internal hire demands push opening to contacts through mobile contacts, email, and social media. That awesome. that is really cool. Awesome idea. Yes. And then the last one is uh, Larry Hall at uh, L R R Y H L L. Um, I'd also his tweet was I'd also add voice recognition dictate tasks for Salesforce One apps. Who needs a Siri when you have sassy or chatty? That's absolutely something that we're starting to look at. Um, a lot of the geolocation, as Ryan was mentioning earlier, and um, voice dictation, um, you know, to do things faster is is are things that we are looking for here at Salesforce. Well, and that's something that a lot of customers are actually already using. Like, for example, for when you're logging the sales task and you have that description, and you don't want to type everything that happened at um, at that customer meeting or when you're you know you're logging that event. Just use Siri. A lot of customers are doing that. You use Siri to quickly dictate. The, um, the information for your follow-up or for your meeting notes and it goes right inside the Salesforce on mobile app. It's great. Absolutely. And, and you know, I mean, but congratulations to these three folks of Ryan, Paige, and Larry. But uh, I encourage all of you, you know, to obviously at mention me um, on Twitter, at Dan Darcy. I'd love to hear your ideas. Um, um, you know, obviously we are always taking a look at what we can add to Salesforce One uh, on stage in a lot of our demos. And so I'm always looking for ideas from you. So thank you. Okay, so we have, let's see, we have about five minutes left for some Q&A. So um, we, have, we got a lot of questions during the session, which is great. So one of the questions is, um, can I drill into a dashboard to view reports? And then the follow-on of, can I view reports on the app without dashboards? So number one, um, yes, you can drill into dashboard to view reports. That was something um, that came out in with the summer 14 release. So it's been out for about a month and a half now. So if you bring up a dashboard, you can drill in and see the underlying report and actually drill down into that object, which is awesome. However, right now, you cannot view reports without having it to a corresponding dashboard. And so if you um, if you want to be reports, they must be part of a dashboard right now. And then let's see, one more question here. If my page is very lengthy with lots of with lots of fields in it, how will that be displayed in the mobile app? Is there any way to just show limited fields in a mobile page? Yes, absolutely. So um, so there are mobile page layouts where you can take some of those fields off so that it displays properly in the mobile um, app. And so it's not just one long running list of things. Obviously, 
Um, as we were talking about earlier, we want to make it very efficient and productive for people who are on the go. So they need to see what information is important to them and what actions and what apps they can use at that time. So that's definitely something that we can do. Well, and then also we have um, compact layouts where you can bring like the three most important things right to the top of the page. And also we encourage our customers to, um, you know, when they're setting up their desktop version of their page layouts, really think mobile first. You know, think about those things that should be at the top of the page because those will be the, page, the fields that are displayed on mobile. So really think mobile first when you're doing your, your desktop. Yeah, and here's well. another actual use case um, that I've seen is, is updating an opportunity. When you click edit, you do, I mean, there's obviously all these fields. Well, there's an actual, you can create a contextual action that just says update opportunity. And when you click update that opportunity, it's only updating or it's updating whatever most, what are the most important fields for that sales rep in their sales process. So, so that's a great contextual action to think about is update opportunity and it only exposes the fields that you want updated for that opportunity. It doesn't expose every field that, that needs editing on that record. Awesome. Okay, another question here. Um, do you know a good place to start learning Visual Force? Yes, we have lots of great places. So if you go to um, developer.salesforce.com, we have lots of great resources. Um, there's actually a whole um, developer's guide to Salesforce One, and we go into length about Visual Force. And um, I'm sure that Simo read that from end to end as he was. Do you, do you have any, it's, it's, any uh, thoughts? Absolutely. absolutely. It's, probably, it's been a while since I went to. Uh, went through the, uh, the, the, the developer talk, but that is definitely the best way to, best ways to go and start on, on, the, on your path to Visual Force. Um, just sort of wanted to add, add to that since we're talking about the mobile, mobile uh, platform, I get asked often about what kind of a skill set you really need to be uh, effective on the S1 platform. And uh, it's worth noting that uh, with the declarative tools, without any Visual Force, without any Apex, you can go really far away. With uh, with getting your applications done, so it's uh, it's definitely uh, it's definitely worth know, knowing what you can do with with the zero code approach before you start creating uh, custom applications. Great, thanks, Simo. All right, one more question. Or we have four more minutes. Sorry. Okay, good. Go, we can take a more. So someone asked, um, you know, they saw the my charts that we had um, that you that you showed in the demo. So what is my charts? That is an app exchange partner. You can actually find it at appexchange.com. And if you go to the left hand side, you'll see an area that says collections. And there's a drop down for Salesforce One Mobile Collection, and that's where you can see every single app exchange partner that has a mobile ready version of their app. And so um, my charts is a great is a um, a great app for seeing some of your dashboards and, and charts at a glance, and um, you can find it there on App Exchange. So there's a question that says, if you scroll up, actually, for the create opportunity action off of the account, is that record type specific, or did you use a Visual Force page so you could select the record type? So um, it's actually uh, that's a great question. I think uh, for this for our implementation, it's it's uh, it's just one record type that we have it tied to for that create opportunity. So um, I mean, but you but could you can select different record types. For example, if Absolutely. you have um, you know your different record types for different opportunities, you can assign those actions to the different layouts. Yeah. So another one was, do you have any recommendations for processing or giving ongoing performance review feedback via the Salesforce One mobile app? So, um, yeah, I mean, again, we're we're in the learning stages as well for this uh, in in kind of the usage and, and adoption for our Salesforce One apps. And right now, we're kind of looking at um, DAU, which is our daily active users for um, each specific. Um, record and we haven't come up with a metrics uh, kind of bar yet so we're, we're just still gathering data as I said um, as we roll out these um, S1 apps to kind of see what what is the average Salesforce one app usage um, and then from there we can actually when we have more data there we can create uh, what's the bar and then what's not meeting the bar and how we can get there. So, I mean, so this this um, webinar and this this kind of content will change obviously if we do this again next year, which I'm sure we will, to kind of show you guys how we're how Salesforce One is uh, how Salesforce is using Salesforce One. Um, I have a, a very last uh, very last question that's an easy one. Someone asked, how are we emulating our iPhone to our Mac and um, 
I'm going to share this with you because I think it's a really awesome tool for doing training. You know, yeah. it's it's really good to be able to show your users what the mobile app looks like, recordings, and so there's a lot of mirroring software out there. You can use mirroring software like um, like Air Server. We actually use Reflector, and those are really great tools. You're able to um, to emulate your um, your phone right to your desktop, and it makes it really easy to record training videos and and show your users what the app actually looks like and how it performs. Yeah, and, and I mean, AirPlay is another great thing to go from a, uh, you know uh, an iPhone to a MacBook. Uh, that's that's what we use actually for this webinar. So it was great. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us and, and taking time out of your day to join us to learn about how Salesforce is using the Salesforce One mobile app. And like we said, we want to make this into a breakout session at Dreamforce. So we hope that you join us. Dan's going to load it with even more features and more custom apps. Simo is going to be making some more custom apps between now and then. So we're, going to, we're excited yeah. to show you all the new stuff. Yeah, and please, uh, I would love to hear feedback on what how we can change the content for this um, since I will be giving that breakout session. Um, so please go to bit.ly slash SF1 mobile to um, give your feedback of this webinar. And I, I appreciate everyone's time and uh, look forward to seeing you all at Dreamforce.